this time we will go into our regular business meeting. We're going to have our invocation by Pastor Valerie Loner of Jonesboro First United Methodist Church in Jonesboro. It'll be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. If you would, please stand with me. Good evening. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, Lord, we look to you as our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. Lord, we come to you tonight giving you thanks for the day that you've given us, and Lord, giving you thanks for all of our public servants. We pray, God, that you will give them wisdom, that you will give them strength. Lord, that you will give them vision for our home. Lord, we pray that in Clayton County, you will create a place of opportunity for all people. Lord, that your hope for us may be lived out and Lord, we pray that you will give us ideas, respect for one another, compassion. And Lord, that when our ideas agree, that we move forward joyfully. And Lord, that when our ideas are different from our brothers or sisters, that we might listen to one another, that we might be patient, that we might find hope. And Lord, that even where there is disagreement, we still might find friendship. Lord, we pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our August 2nd regular business meeting. The first order of business is the adoption of the agenda. Do any board members have any amendments? Anybody have anything? Yes, the only thing I would like to have, not removed, but take it separately, is the item dealing with uh, Comcast and the funding received. I think that deserves a little bit of light. Can you and clear that's on that? On which one is it? I have the number here. I'm trying to pull it back up. We can just comment on it afterwards. That's fine. If we don't have the exact number, because I don't know why I can't see it right now. Quickly. It. I'm like him. I think you need to get my eyes checked. <laughs> all right, you all right? Moving on. We can move on. We can just comment on it later. Oh, Stacy should have. Chairman, it's a budget amendment 2 5. Thank you. Number 11. Thank you. You clear on that, Madam Clerk? I'm clear. Regular agenda. All right. Hearing no others, I will accept a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any other any questions? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Our next order of business is the Veteran of the Month. All right. Veteran of the Month, as displayed on the big board, retired Colonel Kathleen Francis Harris. Retired Colonel Kathleen, 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 I'm sorry, Francis Harris served our, count, our country for over 27 years in the U.S. Army and Army Reserve, culminating her career as a senior program budget officer for the Office of the Chief Army Reserve. She was an active Army Reserve officer. Colonel Harris is a native of Baltimore, Maryland. She is the daughter of the late Ida Bell Covert and William Harris and has three sisters and five brothers. She attended Western High School, the University of Baltimore, and Central Michigan University. Before entering the military, she worked as a Coast 
and trust as a cost and trust accountant in Baltimore, Maryland. She started her military career in 1976 in her hometown of Baltimore, entering the Army Reserves as a finance and accounting specialist at the rank of private first class. She attended a special two-week basic training at Fort McKellen, Alabama. After graduating from basic training, she was promoted to Specialist 5 and served as a weekend warrior with the 2001 and 22nd D U.S. Army Garrison as an accounting specialist. Within two years, she was promoted to Staff Sergeant and by the next year made the promotion list for Sergeant First Class in 1980. Before pinning on her new rank, Staff Sergeant Harris received a direct commission to First Lieutenant in September of 1980 and was assigned as a distributing officer in the 2053rd D reception station in Baltimore, Maryland. In 1982, she went on active duty and was assigned as a program budget officer to the newly reactivated famous Patton's 3rd U.S. Army located at Fort McPherson in Atlanta, Georgia. Throughout her military career, she has held various key positions in the program, budget and the program budget, finance fields, and financial program budget management. Lieutenant Colonel Harris was promoted to Colonel in 2003 and served as Senior Program Budget Officer for the Chief Army Reserve. Colonel Harris holds several awards and decorations, the highest being the Legion of Merit. She retired in September 2003 after serving close to 28 years of service. Retired Colonel Harris is a life member and former president of the National Association of Black Military Women. In June of 2014, she retired again as program manager and senior engineering planning officer for Northrop Grumman uh, Corporation and as a civilian contract contractor for the Department of the Army G8 FDR division. Retired Colonel Harris currently resides in Morrow, Georgia, where she volunteers as the mentor coordinator for the Clayton County Veteran Treatment Court, volunteers with the NABMW Atlanta, Georgia, <coughs> Clayton County JROTC uh, Mentorship Program, the NABMW Atlanta Chapter Veterans Outreach Program, and the NABMW Atlanta Clayton County uh, Assistant Living Facility Veteran Care Program. Retired Colonel Harris continues to be active, actively involved in local Clayton County Veterans Resources events that provide support to local veterans. I don't know how you have time for yourself because you're doing a whole lot, <laughs> but we definitely appreciate that. Let's recognize and honor Lieutenant, I mean, a retired Colonel Kathleen Francis Harris.
can you take a picture of this? Mr. Chairman, the board will now consider the consent agenda. All right, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Sir. Is there a second? Seconded. Second by Commissioner Davis and questions on any of the items. All right, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed. It's uh, unanimous. Next. Our next item is item number 11, budget amendment 2-5. Interim Chief Financial Officer Stacy Merritt. Good evening, Chairman, Vice Chair, Commissioners. Um, this is a carry forward of a donation that was received from Comcast Financial Agency Corporation given to Flint River Community Center in FY22. Donation was not distributed or used, and the department head um, is requesting a carry forward to use it this year. As a motion. So moved. Is there a second? I second it. Any questions? No, just want to know what was the amount that we're carrying over? It's 15000 um, It was deposited, I believe, sometime in late April, so they didn't have a chance to use it. And would we be allowed to use it towards our children within that facility? Um, we are putting it into minor computer equipment. Okay, good. So that would be a question for okay. um, Ms. Tory. I know it actually comes with a, gr um, a grant that we were able to secure, and I just wanted um, everybody to know that that was $15,000 that was given to us to be able to make sure that we push forth um, computer literacy uh, throughout the county. So it's just a great thing when we have folks giving us money and we're not having to <laughs> spend all of our money. <laughs> that was it. That good? Okay. Those Thank you to on. Comcast. Bye. Bye. Opposed. Bye. It's unanimous. Our next item is item number 25, resolution 2022-167, Chief Staff Attorney Charles Reed. Good evening, uh, Chairman, Vice Chair, um, Board. Resolution 2022-167 is a resolution authorizing the Clayton County Internal Audit Department to identify and recommend accounting firms to the Clayton County Board of Commissioners to enter into an agreed upon a procedures engagement agreement to authorize the chairman to execute any documents to otherwise perform all acts necessarily necessary to accomplish the intent of this resolution to authorize the chief financial officer to amend the budget to reflect an appropriate revenue source and expenses may be required to provide an effective date of this resolution for other purposes is there a motion so moved is there a second i'll second it any questions i do um commissioner davis are they replicating the duties that terminus was put in place to present with the first audit no um, the recommendations from the uh, first audit were limited in scope and based on the findings of that first audit the uh, terminus had recommended um, expanding the audit to include additional items and that's what this uh, resolution if approved will allow the internal not for them to necessarily carry it out but for internal audit to determine a firm um, to carry out that uh, those um, amended um, procedures what are the additional items that could terminus not have done that themselves well it wasn't that they couldn't do it it's just that the authority that this board gave was limited in scope okay. so as uh, responsibly they did not go beyond what the board authorized them to do but they said based on what they did mm -hmm. They uh, recommended additional things if the board wanted to consider going beyond what was previously uh, provided in scope. Okay. And, and what are those additional items? What's that increased scope? 
so um, what they have recommended um, is um, to audit executive management, department managers, employees, travel and training expenditures, and including um, payments to colleges, universities, and institutes. Uh, they also recommended that at least um, a, a, for the first two executive management and department heads that perhaps starting off with those before it expands to others. Um, and um, so and, and that's pretty much the gist of what they had. And then um, this board has other items uh, that were included along with those recommendations for the uh, auditing firm to enter into as well. Proposed. Okay. Thank so, you. So, my, go ahead, uh, Commissioner. Uh, yes, who, who chooses the auditing firm? The board will, but uh, internal audit will make that recommendation. Not terminus. That's correct. It would be somewhat, in, a, in my opinion, inappropriate for a private person to make a recommendation as to whoever. So we're bringing it back to the county to um, to recommend and then bring it back to this board for approval of who will um, do that scope. So my question is, those additional items, none of those included the review of the commissioner's travel and training? In this resolution, it will. Um, the if approved, the uh, second audit may assess the following er uh, may assess the following areas: the board of commissioners audit traveling and training expenditures, exec executive management, um, department heads, colleges, universities, and institutes payments to those uh, colleges, inst universities, and institutes transactions signed off um, by the CFO, COO, and Chairman Turner under Section uh, 2-115 for informal purposes. Uh, and former purchases for general procurement and um, audit of uh, employees travel and training expenditures but that the second audit would go through the first five that I mentioned first before uh, continuing the audit to expand to all employees uh, travel and training so why isn't it all included at one time if that's what the board desires then you can it's probably for expense purposes but if that's the will of the board, you can do what you want to do. <laughs> well, obviously, there's the, the motion that's on the table is for the first scope. The first five. The first five that I mentioned, which was uh, board, executive management, department heads, colleges, universities, and institutes, transactions uh, with the individuals I mentioned earlier. And then, based on the findings, they would come back to the board to see if you wanted to expand to include all employees under um, for all their travel and training. Any other questions? I guess yeah, my I, comment is if they're, going to, if they're going to begin to come back to expand, why not just include in the first? I mean, I understand budgetary reasons, but my thing would be to modify the, the uh, resolution to include that now or, or not. You can. I'm sorry. Commissioner Anderson, yes. Oh, I didn't say anything. Oh, I thought you had no, a question. Good. I'm going with the first one. Okay, but the motion is uh, for the first one. So the only, only thing is, I would say is we need to make sure that it is, um, this firm is tied to your, through your arm, through the attorney's office, based upon my research, because what we need to do is be able to take a look at these items as a board. Um, so that we can have all the information before us. But um, at this point, I do definitely call for the question. Uh, we've got the work of the business of the people to handle. I, but, yeah, I do have one more question. Commissioner uh, Davis' question has been called. Is there a second on the question? Second. I'm sorry. Can you say I call for the question? I call for the question. Mm -hmm. Second. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay, three, two, it passes. So we're going to the vote now at this time. Uh, those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. Your Commissioner Hamber, it's hard for me to hear you. I you yes. you. Three, two, it passes. Next.
Uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, the next items are board appointments, starting with item number 26. Hmm. Mr. Chairman, uh, before we get to the board appointments, I would like the point of privilege, please. Yes, please. That is, I would like for um, our fire chief, EMS, uh, what's the other word? <laughs> Resilience. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, to come forward, we have some very good information uh, regarding uh, some areas, especially in District 2, that I would like for him to uh, let the public know about. Chief Murkison. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Madam Vice Chair, um, members of the board. I had the pleasure to call Commissioner Hambrick earlier this week and share some news with her, and she thought it would be very prudent um, for us to bring this um, information to the full board and ultimately the citizens of Clayton County. So um, through the Office of Resilience and Sustainability, we've been doing a lot of work in the community addressing some longstanding flooding issues that are occurring um, all over the county, but primarily um, with the residents um, up in District 2 in the northwest part of the county that, that see um, rampant and widespread flooding multiple times a year. Um, we're out in these communities, we've met with these homeowners, some of them get on average of a foot to 16 inches of water in their homes um, a couple different times a year, depending on the storms. And as you all well know, um, with a lot of the climate impact, we're seeing these storms are coming more and more frequent and they're getting more and more fierce. Um, back in October of last year, we received an email from COO Stanford um, advising us of a grand opportunity um, through the state, specifically the Water Resource Development Act. Um, we got that. Um, information on October 26th and we only had till November 12th to turn the application mm -hmm. and get it submitted so um, my office along with the Office of Emergency Management um, got the do necessary documents together <coughs> we did submit it and meet that deadline um, to get that in um, after that went through um, Senator Ossoff's office which is where that email originated um, the senator's office after an on-site meeting with the US Army Corps of Engineers asked us to resubmit um, for a different grant opportunity, and that grant opportunity coming through the Clean Water State Revolving Fund, um, which is part of the congressionally directed spending um, that comes out of D.C. Um, every year. So we, we did that. We were able to, um, to get that application completed as well. We did um, have a coordinated community meeting with impacted citizens of Ashland Estates um, and received um, almost 100 signatures um, on a petition for congressionally directed spending. Um, to address a lot of the long-standing issues. We also had finding the Flint, American Rivers, and the um, Atlanta Regional Commission were involved um, in that effort as well, and they also gave us corporate letters of support for the funding. <clears throat> um, I had the pleasure to call um, Commissioner Hambrick on July 28th and tell her that we received a call from Senator Ossoff's office letting us know that $2.688 million had been congressionally directed and included in the upcoming bill. Um, to be specifically allocated for the Camp Creek Watershed um, Reclamation uh, Project. So, <clears throat> great work, so great work. as soon as we can get um, the fine folks in D.C. to get that bill through, um, there will be much needed relief coming to the citizens of um, a large portion of District 2, some of the northern parts of District 3, and a smidge of the western part of District 4 where it comes over into the uh, Camp Creek um, Watershed. So we're excited about it. Um, and happy to bring um, some relief um, to the citizens of Clayton County. So and thank does, you, ma'am, for the opportunity. No, thank you. And does it also include Southern Region, the Southern Regional mm -hmm. area? Is that the different? Different watershed. That's the Flint River watershed, which we're also addressing through Senator Ossoff's office, um, as well as through GEMA and FEMA. So separate grant, but we're still working <coughs> that one hard as well. Okay. Thank you all so much. I, I really appreciate the effort and all that you all have made. Thanks to the COO. To you and your staff and all and uh, others that have helped but definitely to the residents I know this is be very very good news to them so I really appreciate you all yes ma'am thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Sure. that's a great return on investment <laughs> all right first board appointments to the library board dr. Emmett McCourt jr. has resigned from the library board the new appointment will begin immediately and will expire May 5th 2023 Commissioner Anderson Good evening. I move that we appoint uh, Reverend Felicia Butts to the library board. Yeah, second. Second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Next board appointments to the Board of Appeals, Ms. Tanya 
uh, Jane Funny term on the Board of Appeals will expire August 19th, 2022. New term will begin August 19th, 2022 and expire August 19th, 2025. Commissioner Franklin. I'm going to go ahead and reappoint uh, a Tanya Jean Funny and, um, for the next term. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Next board appointment, <clears throat> Solid Waste Authority. Ms. Edie Young, term on the Solid Waste Management Authority will expire August 20th, 2022. New term will begin August 20th, 2022, and expires August 20th, 26. Commissioner Anderson. Good evening. I'm going to hold that to the next meeting um, and until I get a board appointment for that position. Thank you. You're clear to hold till next. You want her to hold it till next meeting mm -hmm. or until you get ready? Well, until, until the um, until next find appointment. Someone. Yeah, until I find someone. Okay, just hold it until advised for, further, okay. uh, Madam Clerk. Next board appointment is zoning advisory group. Mr. Keith Parker, term on the zoning advisory group, expire August 19. 2022 new term will begin August 19, 2022 and expire August 19, 2025. Commissioner Hambert. Uh, yes, I would like to hold that appointment on, for the next meeting of August 16th, next regular business meeting. You, you're clear, Madam Clerk? I'm clear. All right, next board appointment is also to the Zoning Advisory Group. Audrey B. Lewis term on the Zoning Advisory Group expires August 19, 2022. New term will begin August 19, 2022 and expire August 19th, 2025. This is an at-large appointment. Are I'd like to make recommendations. Yes. Uh, I'd like to recommend Ms. Altamese Dees as long as there's not a conflict of interest by our attorney. If he can. Mr. Reed, will there be a conflict for I'd have to look at the, um, at the duties of the uh, zoning advisory group and see if there is, um, I don't think so, but. You're right. Uh, don't think so, or uh, are you sure? Um, does not appear uh, based on uh, the code that it speaks to there being any sp uh, specific qualifications, so I don't think there would be a necessarily a conflict. Uh, obviously, she could not vote on anything that she has an interest in, um, but other than that, she should be able to serve. Good. You know, so if she is, if she is uh, handling a real estate matter that comes before the zoning advisory group, she'd have to recuse herself as any person would. But other than that, I don't think her. So her, her being an agent of the county is not going to preclude her. Well, I don't. She only deals with county matters. I don't think that she. My understanding is that she's only done. She's only appointed um, from time to time. That she's not a specific. Okay. designated uh, unless something has changed I'm not sure I don't I'm think she's a designated agent for the county I think she's just appointed from time to time to handle specific matters okay. all right did we get a second on it I'll I'll second. Second it. all right second by Commissioner Hambrick those in favor aye aye, aye. opposed it's unanimous Mr. Chairman I would like Amber. to go back to the uh, number 29 board appointment zoning advisory group, please. I do have an appointee. All right. Yeah. Let's I would go like back to, to. Okay, I'm sorry. Now I just want to make sure that for the record it's clear. Going back to 29 board appointment for the zoning advisory group, Mr. <clears throat> Keith, Keith Parker term on the ZAG board will expire August 19, 2022. New term will begin August 19, 2022 and will expire August 19th of 25. Commissioner Hamburg. Uh, Yes, I would like to appoint Ms. Audrey Lewis uh, for that position. Is there a second? A second. Second by <laughs> Commissioner Anderson. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Mr. Chairman, the next item is public comments. 
Citizens will be given two minutes maximum time limit to speak before the Board of Commissioners with a total time of 20 minutes for public comments. Please note that all public comments must be limited to matters on the agenda or over matters which the governing body has jurisdiction. Speakers must, must maintain decorous demeanor and refrain from personal attacks upon board members, shouting and using obscene language. Please state your name and county of residency for the record. Speak clearly into the microphone and speakers should be courteous, respectful, and not make any disparaging remarks or use abusive language when addressing the board. Teresa Talley. Teresa Talley, Hampton, Georgia. I would like to thank everyone for coming together for the inmates and the prisoners to help cut the grass and pick up the trash. It is a good look to see the support from everyone. Maintaining the entire county is a daily job. We have the resource to continue. I'm not sure if we have this program in our county, but what about hiring the inmates or the prisoners when they get out of jail? You already know about their background. They do a good job. They can work under the refuge department. This would be a benefit for every district. This would be an opportunity and a second chance for the inmates to continue to cut the grass and pick up the trash. Think about the department stores and the grocery stores that give the disadvantage a second chance. I even named, came up with the name. The Clayton County Second Chance Lawn Care under the supervision of code enforcement. <coughs> this is in a disadvantaged group already because they've been in jail. So just think about it. Like I said, they already do a real good job and it will help the uh, refuge department out. It's something to think about. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Orlando Good. Madam Clerk, Orlando Gooden, Clayton County. Chairman Turner, during the July 19th Board of Commissioners meeting, you said the structure has not changed, just some of my duties have been minimized. You did the performance evaluations for COO Dietrich Stanford and CFO Ramona Bivens. Now, will the full board do the performance evaluations for the COO, Directors of Finance, and human resources. Also, David Corbin of Terminus Advisors. Can you give this, Jim Turner? It's just an article. Commissioner Davis, Commissioner Hamburg. The article in Clayton Crescent shows the track record for David Corbin and Matthew <coughs> Arrington of Terminus Advisors. Explain how the commissioners who are part-time going to do performance evaluations for full-time employees. At the 2019 retreat, commissioners said, we need to change the image of Clayton County. Now we know to what. The presentation by Celeste Hollis Singleton, the senior grants analyst, explained that we are leaving some grant funding on the table. The e system will solve that by centralizing and expediting request by the Office of Performance Management. Commissioner Hamburg, they have been in business for 22 years. They are a national organization and they work with NACA and NACO. Commissioner Anderson said, I am a supporter of grant funding. So why wasn't eCVIS approved? Thank you. Robin Wells. Good afternoon, Robin Wells, Clayton County. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for hearing my concern. Uh, I've been a resident of Clayton County for 35 plus years. Um, I live in District 1. I come before you today to speak on the noise ordinance law. Uh, my neighbors and I are concerned about the live band platforms with the microphones that start playing way before the allowed time and ends sometimes 2 to 3 a.m. in the morning. After speaking to our neighbors and numerous calls to 911 and the non-emergency numbers, we still have no resolution. Every officer that we have called out have a different answer. When we speak to the neighbors, it only gets louder. So obviously, we are not on the same page. I speak honestly when I say our windows vibrate, TVs on captions, pictures are shaking on the walls. We even have some neighbors that work on weekends and they have also complained. I truly love my music, but I know that my music is not for the whole neighborhood and shouldn't be heard blocks away. So I come to you looking for answers to guide us to the right direction on the next step we need to make to make our community and neighborhood feel safe for everyone to enjoy their homes and their yards. Thank you for taking the time to hear my concern. Ma'am, just for clarity, the noise is coming from a residence? Yes. Okay. Have you spoken to the uh, police department? Several chief? times, yes. Okay. The, the chief is back there somewhere, yeah. I believe. Mm -hmm. like, there if you could get with him, he's in the back. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, I sure will. Yeah. Get with him again, please. Okay, I sure Thank will. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jamela Franklin. Greetings. I am Professor Jamila Franklin, and I reside in District 2. And <clears throat> I, along with my uh, colleague and friend, Helen Jordan, walk eight and a half miles per day, five days per week. And the conditions that I bring before you today are serious public safety and health issues for not only my walking partner and myself, but for the entire neighborhood. Um, we have constant large amounts of trash on flat shows, Rock Hill Drive, Riverdale Road, which caused public safety health issues in rodents, overgrown grass and trees, especially in the Flat Shoals and Aspen Road area. The grass in this area is now approximately two feet tall. I am five feet four inches. It covers half my body. It is apparent that the, mow that the mowers are not mowing this area and have not been consistently mowing this area. We have broken sidewalks with large cracks, which are hazardous for walkers. Dead copperhead snakes have been found at the intersection of Aspen Road and Flat Shoals, the area which is routinely left uncut. Now, efforts that I have made along with my neighbors is that I personally, as a senior, pick up flat shows, uh, trash on Flat Shoals Road. Recently, I have picked up trash uh, that has filled two 30-gallon ba um, bags, and we have pictures. I've contacted District uh, 2 Commissioner Hambrick's office four times via phone from April 2022 to May 2022, left detailed messages with my name and telephone number to discuss these issues. Neither Commissioner Hambrick nor her aide has returned my calls. I, along with Ms. Jordan and another neighbor, have sent emails dated Ju uh, June 6th, June 13th, June 14th, July 5th, Commissioner Hambrick nor her aide has called me nor returned any of the emails or responded to them. I contacted uh, Commissioner Davis's office by mistake since I had not received any responses from Commissioner Hambrick and he immediately talked to me along with his aide, uh, Ms. Harad, and addressed my concerns. I'm now, sorry, solutions. I'm sorry, ma'am, your time is up though. Okay. Thank you. But I have inside the packets all of the information. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Helen Jordan. Helen Jordan. Good morning. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you for hearing me. Uh, my name is Helen Jordan, and I've been a resident of Clayton County since 2009. Um, I am a retired teacher, and I am Miss um, Jamila's, sorry, Franklin's walking buddy. 
So um, as we walk those eight and a half miles each day, it is frustrating when we are trying to um, maintain our health, get into better health for us to have to uh, be confronted with unsightly trash, um, fear of snakes, because I'm going to run, um, and just uh, overgrown grass. The, I have received, I did send an email, and I did get a response from someone. It did not come from um, Commissioner Hanbrick's uh, office, but the young lady that I did talk to, she, she actually called back, and she was actually out there with my email letting me know what areas of concern that she was addressing. So um, cracks in the sidewalk. I have, uh, my husband also walks with a walker and sometimes with a cane, and it is very difficult for him to walk and when the, when the sidewalks are uneven. It's dangerous for him. On Rock Hill Drive, which is the area where we live, one side of the um, street will be cut. The other side is not touched. It has been cut, but they don't pick up the trash beforehand. So then you've got an unsightly matter because the trash is in bits and pieces at that time. Um, if there were, I know things cost. If there were signs that were put up on the signs that are already, no littering signs, on the posts that are already standing, which means attach a sign um, to those particular things that are already standing, it might deter someone. I don't know if they can do cameras or what, but something has to be done. There are a lot of people that want to walk, that watch us walk, and they can't do it because it's unsightly. We love this community. We want to walk. We want it to look beautiful as it does in some other places. But some areas are just not being taken care of consistently. I'm sorry your time's up, ma'am. Thank you. Dr. Thelma Burns. <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Dr. Thelma Burns, and I'm here to just speak on I live in Clayton County. I live in Jonesboro Road. I, I mean, live in Jonesboro, um, around from Kendrick Middle. And my landlord is a slumlord. So um, the, the house that, that we're in, my family and I, it failed inspection. Um, we moved in 2018. It failed inspection 2019 to 2020. He wanted us to move. But um, I fixed up the place. So when they came back, I fixed it up myself. So um, we passed the inspection, so then he changed his mind. This time there's like a few issues that I personally can't fix. Like the window in my sunroom does not close. There's water running. Um, the, the bathroom is stuck. The fire, um, fire department, gas department came and turned off the hot water because there was some gas leak at in the coming from the boiler so I took him the paperwork and that was um, June 1st of uh, this year um, so he doesn't we, don't, we did not we never had a smoke alarm so they was they were like um, well you can go to the fire department and get a smoke alarm for free and so I'm trying to figure out why the landlord can't do that um, we also have some black mold that's under the sink um, in the bathrooms and in the kitchen because the water is still running. And so my, I have my granddaughters that's been getting sick. Myself has been sick and I've we been to the doctor. My daughter has a rash. I have an adopted son that also have the same rash. And because um, we're not blood related, it has to be from something different because for my, for my adopted son and my daughter to have the same rash is something going on. So, um, I'm just here about the safety issues of the house, the criminal negligence that's going on with the landlord, being a slumlord. I'm from New York, so um, don't want to come to Georgia and have the same issues that I had in New York. Thank you, ma'am. So that's your, where your, your time is up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Carol Yancey. Carol Yancey, Rich, Georgia. FY23 budget report, page 38. The organizational chart shows the citizens of Clayton County at the very top, meaning 
We are your employees, and the first line supervisor with jurisdiction over the Board of Commissioners and all other elected officials. Yet, we have three members of this board placed us, the citizens, our concerns and responses to address their poor conduct and action at the end of the meeting, violating our constitutional rights, the First Amendment, freedom of speech, by trying to limit what we can say. The same commissioners recently made changes to the board's operational setup, whereas now they are involved with managing day-to-day -day operations, micromanaging county staff, as well as misuse and waste of public funds and equipment. Ms. Anderson, my neighbors have contacted you directly asking why our street, we only had one street out of four streets paved in our subdivision early July and the mess and trash left only to be forwarded to the chairman or someone else other than you returning their calls and dealing with the issue. As your employer with ju jurisdiction and rights over this board, we the citizen expect and demand transparency, safe working conditions for all employees and citizens free of harassment, retaliation, hostile work environment, and to adhere to the same rules and regulations you all are not above the law. You all have tarnished this county's image and branding with a Gotham County mindset, black girl tragic, and you don't operate as a local governing board Point should. Point order, thank you. Point, Point your order order somewhere. Order to you. Thank you. Ma'am. Go sit down. All right, Atania Jean uh, Funny. Good evening, Atanya Jean Funny, unincorporated Clayton County, um, board chair, vice chair, commissioners. I first want to say thank you, Commissioner Franklin, for uh, renewing my board appointment. Um, I might be biased, but I do think we have the best well-run board in the county, so we get along really, really well. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to do the work of the county. Um, I am also here to ask for your consideration to put the comments back at the beginning of the board meeting and to um, put the time back to three minutes. I think someone left because she couldn't stay, that she might have wanted to um, say something. So I'm asking your consideration on that. And I want to stress that if we want to recruit businesses, we have to look at our image as a whole. It's not one department to um, be responsible for bringing businesses into our county. So we all have to take a part in that and make sure that we are portraying the best of Clayton County to the outside world. And it is election season, so I want to remind everyone <coughs> that we have a big election in November. And I hope everyone goes to check their status and make sure that they are registered to vote so we can get ready for this season. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, that concludes public comment. Is there a need for executive session, Mr. Reed? Yes, on real estate, personnel, and litigation. All right, is there a motion going <coughs> to executive session for real estate, litigation, and personnel? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Madam Clerk, you ready? I'm ready. All right, motion to reconvene. Second. 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 Uh, Second. By motion made by Commissioner Hambrick, second by Commissioner Davis. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Uh, I believe we have Ms. Ambles. Good evening again, board, and good evening to our Clayton County citizens. Um, on behalf of the district office of the district attorney and per civil service rule 5.203, we are requesting to hire Anissa Williams, A-N-Y-S-S-A, -S -S at grade 27, step 9, which is two steps above the entry salary at grade 27.7. The cost is $2,024. All right, is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Probably move to second. Are there any questions? Those in favor, aye. 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. On behalf of internal audits, the request is to appoint Assistant Director of Internal Audits, Leslie Moore, to Interim Director during the duration of Director Stacy Merritt's appointment to Interim CFO. Absent any other budgetary considerations, the cost of the request is $11,754. All right, is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? Yes, I know that the motion and second has been made, but considering this board has already voted to follow through with some additional processes for a audit process, I believe that we need to hold this item until we can clarify that. Any other questions? Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. On behalf of Superior Court, Human Resources is requesting a lateral transfer for Ms. Angela Pendleton instead of a promotional transfer. The cost of this request is $9,020. Is there a motion? Is there a motion? All right. Request is fails due to lack of a motion. And I want to confirm with the board the other executive session item that we discussed regarding senior services. If it pleases the board to bring back that item at the August 16th meeting so we'll have the cost and everything vetted and laid out. Yes, we're clear. Is that it? Yes, sir. That's it, Chairman. All right. Motion to adjourn. Thank That's you so all. Moved. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous.